Hey everybody and welcome to day seven of our 30 days of how to be successful. I am your host Jody Almond and I'm excited to be with you. I'm also the founder and CEO of Solution Ministries right here above my head and uh, I'm excited to be able to take you on this journey of being able to find your success in 30 days or less in your life and so we've been discussing that over the past few days and I want to continue talking today because as we get into it, we've been talking about developing your purpose. And as we talk about developing your purpose, uh, yesterday uh, we discussed how that to develop your purpose, you need to be intentional. Uh, but we also, we talked about yesterday how you have to invest in yourself. And today I want to go on with that thought process. And I want to talk to you for just a few minutes uh, about some things as we jump into this. And so today I want to talk to you about inspect. Now, Yesterday, I shared that if you take one hour every day for one year and focus on a topic, you would be considered an expert. But what if I told you that information was incorrect and that actually upon further examination and research, the, the uh, specialist and those that strategize in what, can, what is uh, considered an expert in a field say that you should take one hour a day, every day, not for one year, but for five years. Now, they say at the end of five years, you will discover you still need to continue learning in this topic because you understand you're not truly an expert with so much more to learn. In other words, can you truly exhaust a topic and an area of your life? I do not believe you can. Now, the reason I share that is because in the world we live in today, there's something that we call instant gratification. And when we talk about instant gratification, we're talking about things like a cell phone. Now, if you see the picture that I chose to use for this, there's actually a person with a camera, and this is a newer style camera. So imagine if they had the old style camera with like an eight millimeter film or something, and they're taking a film and they're taking a picture or video. But today we have it so instantaneously that the moment that we take the picture, we see the picture. Within seconds, milliseconds, we see the instant picture of what we took. Now, we thought we had jumped ahead of the game back when I was a child and we had something called an instant camera, and it was a Polaroid, and you would take a picture and it would develop film right in front of you. But we have jumped so far ahead now with this technology and cell phones and cameras and all the things we have that the moment you take the picture, the, that's the moment that you see what's going on. Now, the problem with instant gratification, folks, is that it deals with inconsistencies. In other words, if I take this picture on my cell phone and I don't like it, guess what? I delete it and I take another one in just a moment. We deal with inconsistencies a lot of times. And what I find is, is that there's really and truthfully, there's two types of people in this world. There's two types of people in this world when it comes to instant gratification. The one type of person is the moment people. I call this the wanting people, all right? The second type of person is the movement people. I call these the waiting people. So you have the wanters and the waiters, the moment people and the movement people. And the reason I classify them that way, and I'm going to break it down for you, is because the moment people are the ones that want it now. They aren't willing to put in the time and the effort that it takes to get to the peaks. If you remember, I told you that there's mountain climbers and there's valley dwellers. The valley dwellers usually will end up being, if they stay valley dwellers, moment people. They're the people that they want instant gratification. They want it now. They're the microwave generation. They don't want it to be a crock pot type of person, but, but they want it right now. They want it instantaneously. They don't want to have to peel the potato, cut the potato, boil the potato, mash the potato, season the potato. No, they want a packet that is instant, throw some water in it, throw it in the microwave, and in two seconds or two minutes, you've got 
potatoes, okay? Now, my wife doesn't prefer instant potatoes. She doesn't even like them. So for her, it's the old style, take your time, it's worth the wait. Amen. And that's what I'm talking about is because for the moment, people, they're motivated by instantaneous results that reap rewards. They want to be rewarded every day and every action for what they do. In other words, when they accomplish something, they want to be rewarded right then. They don't want to have to wait on the process Nobody likes the process, right? But they're not willing to wait on the process so that they can get the reward. Can I just remind you of some old sayings? One of them is good things come to those who wait. And the second one would be patience is a virtue. Can I remind you of that? And, and trust me, we all have our limitations on our patience, I'm sure. But here's the thing, folks. This mentality of being a moment person is not very healthy. Being a moment person, now listen, if if I'm in McDonald's or a fast food restaurant, I might not should even mention names. If I'm in a fast food restaurant and and I'm wanting fast food, then it's okay to be an instant kind of person. If I'm in a restaurant and all I want is a fast, quick meal, it's okay for me to be in a fast food establishment and expect to get my food within just a couple minutes. But if I'm in a nice, expensive sit-down restaurant, then I'm going to be willing to be a movement person. I'm going to be willing to wait on the result. I'm willing to wait on that, that nice steak versus that burger that I'll get from the fast food restaurant. If it takes me an hour to get my food, I understand that because this is what I know. I know that it's worth the wait. And that's the difference between moment people and movement people. Movement people are waiting people. They keep making progress while they're waiting. If you notice the moment person standing there and the only thing he's waiting on is the reward right? The movement person is willing to keep moving towards the place he's going. That's why he's a mountain climber. <clears throat> That's why he's the kind of person that says, I'll climb the mountain to get to the peak because I know that the reward is great at the top and I'm willing to put in whatever time, whatever effort, whatever energy so that I can get there. Now you say, that's awesome. I'm glad that I am a mountain moving person, a climbing person, because I have goals. Well, can I break this down for you a minute? I believe that goals can be good, but I would much rather choose growth over goals. Because goals can be achieved, and then what do you do? Yeah, you set new goals, but... Like, is that really what you're out to achieve? When we're talking about growth, here's what the difference is. Growth is continual and it takes commitment. Now, if you think about what I said, if you're a moment person, you're, you're living a life that really ends up becoming inconsistent, right? Because it deals with instant gratification. If you're a movement person, you're consistent. You're constantly moving, you're constantly going somewhere. Now, if, if you reach goals so many times, we stop and we feel like, okay, I've reached my goal. There's nothing else for me to do. And we have to worry about the idea of complacency. But to be consistent, we want to just have the mentality that I want to grow. And this is the difference. Goals can be reached. Growth will never be exhausted. You will never exhaust growth in your life. We talked about this yesterday with the idea of investing in yourself. Now, what happens is the movement people are motivated by this idea of reaching something worthwhile. Now, even though these two classifications of people are very, very different, they're very opposite, they have something very much in common. And the thing they have in common is a question.
And that question that they have in common is this. And I'm going to show it to you. The question they have in common is they both ask the question of how. But this is the difference in their questions. The moment people, the ones who are want instant gratification, the ones who want to be rewarded right now for every little thing, the ones that want to just get everything right now, they're now people, they're wanting people. There's nothing wrong with wanting, but be willing to wait for what you want. And they're not willing to wait. They're instant gratification type people. This is their how question. How long will this take? It's like, are we there yet? I know that many times I've taken trips with, with my family, and you know this as well, even with children at Christmas. Is it Christmas yet? Because they want the gift right now. They don't want to have to wait for it. They want it now. And what I find is, is that when we talk about moment people, moment people are asking that same kind of question that us, when we're children, ask, or when we're on a trip, you know, like if you're going to Disney World, the kids are going to be, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? How long is this going to take? How long is it going to take us to get there, Daddy? How are we there yet? And I've been in that situation. I understand. And this wasn't with small kids. This was with older children. And I get it. In my mind, I was like, oh, GPS, how much longer is it going to take? Because I want to be at Disney. I want to be enjoying time with my family. I want to be at the theme park riding the rides and seeing the shows and enjoying the sights. And I want to have the magic of being a child again, right? And so the thing is, is that we ask the question as moment people, how long will this take? Now, The movement people have their how question too. Their how question is very different. It's on the other end of the spectrum. Their how question is, how far can I go? Moment people are wanting the instant gratification. How long is it going to take before I can get what I'm trying to achieve? The movement people are, how much can I achieve? That's awesome, folks. Which kind of person do you want to be? Do you want to be a moment person, right? Do you want to be a moment person or do you want to be a movement person? Which kind of questions are you asking yourself when it comes to your success? Is your success question, how long will this take for me to be successful? Or let's even back off success for a minute. Let's go back to the first sessions I talked to you about. How long will it take for me to become significant Or how far can I go in my success and my significance? You see, that's the real question. And that's the question people of real success and people of real significance begin asking themselves. Do you think the Bill Gates, when when they were constructing Apple and the computer and all this stuff, do you think that he was asking the question of, Oh, how long is this going to take? No, he was saying, how far can I take this idea? How far? And he's still asking that question. They're not finished yet. That's why you're able to have the instant gratification, right? That's why you're able to have that where you can look on your cell phone because he was willing to ask, how far can I go? And he didn't stop with simply a computer that was running off a modem. No, now we have things that we hold in our hands and we have the world at our fingertips. So you can see that the question of how is crucial crucial to our development. What kind of person we are is crucial to our development. Development, And it's all going to start with inspecting ourselves. We have to inspect ourselves and say, what type of person am I? Am I a moment person or am I a movement person? Am I a person who constantly is wanting instant gratification and reward or am I a person who's willing to wait because I know once I arrive at those destinations it will be worthwhile and I'll get my reward and I will get my gratification but it's going to take time sweat energy effort it's going to take me educating and investing in myself do you see where I'm going folks 
And so when we get to that, then we begin to ask the question of, okay, so what is the questions? If I'm going to inspect myself, what are the questions that I'm asking myself? Am I asking myself questions like, oh my Lord, how long is this going to take? Or am I asking myself the question of how far can I go? Now, let me say this. Again, and I say this in every session because this is a faith-based type teaching. But as I ask you this, I want you to answer yourself the question. Whether you're faith-based or not, answer the question. If we go back to some of the things I've taught you, you have to be optimistic. You have to know that anything is possible. Think about this. If you were to talk, if you were to talk, to your grandfather, grandmother, or great-grandfather, great-grandmother, they would have told you that what you see on my screen and what you see on your screen is absolutely, positively an impossibility. They would have told you you are absurd. You're preposterous for believing that you could ever have a device in your hand that would even simply connect you over some kind of airwaves and cellular conversation and, and wired conversation to be able to talk to somebody like that. I mean, when the telephone come out and the first telephones and the first operating systems, they thought that was real as far as it could be taken for the most people. But aren't you glad that people continue developing developing the purpose of the phone and look what we have now and I'm not sure we're at the end of this road or not I believe it could continue but my point is this is that when you begin to ask yourself the question instead of how long will it take how far can I go now you're asking the right question now you're becoming a movement person now you're moving away from the mentality that the majority of humanity on planet earth in 2020 have which is moment people because we're so used to having instantaneous results that we are moment people but we need to become movement people so that we are moving and willing to wait because it's worthwhile for the reward, for the prize, for what's coming. Again, I'm talking from a faith base, but let me share this with you. Does God reward us now for what we do? I believe so. But here's the catch. The Bible teaches me that when all is said and done, there will be a rewards ceremony. The Bible says we will be rewarded based off the works we have done, whether they be good or bad. They'll be put through the fire, and if they are wood, hay, and stubble, they will burn up. If they are precious gold, such as silver, uh, metal, and precious gold, they will come out more refined and pure. And so what happens is, once we reach our eternal destination in the kingdom of God, Jesus himself will reward us with crowns. This is what the Bible teaches. And so here's my, here's my thinking on this. If I say, how long will this take? Oh, how long before I get to go and meet my maker? And how long before the culmination of all of God's plan comes together? And how long before I stand before the judgment seat? And how long before I get to get my rewards? And how long and how long and how long? You see where that mentality comes in? But what instead of, if I ask instead of how long, as a believer, I've learned to ask how far? How far can I go? How many rewards can I get? How much pleasure can I bring to my king? And so when you apply this principle to anything in life you're trying to be successful at, let me break it down in the last few minutes I've got. If you are, and I've used this illustration throughout, Let's look at the student in school. How long will it take for me to graduate? Oh, man, I'm only in eighth grade. I've got four or five more years to go, and then I've got college, and then, wow, how long is this going to take? But what if that same student began to ask, how far can I go? Can I graduate with honors? 
Can I be at the head of my class? Could I possibly be valedictorian of my high school graduating class? Could I possibly be the college student who lands the job in the career that I desire to go into before I ever graduate? Is that possible? How far can I go? Could I be the next great entrepreneur? Could I be the next great inventor? How far can I go? You see, you've got to begin asking those kinds of questions because it depends on what kind of person you are to your success. Can, can, this, person, can this person who is a moment person have some success? Sure, sure. But a success comes and it goes very quickly. The moment person doesn't really enjoy their success because it's here and it's gone. And now uh, I'm not instantly gratified no more. I want more gratification. How do I find it? The movement person is constantly being successful because they are working towards a worthwhile cause. And usually you'll find for really successful people that cause is to be significant. And if you missed that teaching, go back and get it because all these are culminating into grand schemes of teaching you how to really be successful. And so movement people are the ones who are saying, I want to achieve more than just a, a, a temporary success. And I want to achieve more than just a, a quick fix of feeling good about myself. I want to be a person who is moving, who is waiting on something so worthwhile that once I get there, it's going to be mind blowing. But I know it's going to take time. If you remember, I told you in earlier sessions, everything worth having is uphill. That's why I call it mountain climbers. Everything worth having is uphill. And so I don't know where you feel like you fall in, but I feel like every one of us right now need to take a moment and we need to inspect. It's not enough to simply be intentional. It's not enough to simply invest in yourself. Once we know our purpose, to develop our purpose, we have to start getting into some of our motivations. And our motivations are, am I, as I inspect myself, what kind of person am I? What kind of person am I? Am I the kind of person that wants instant gratification? If so, then that means I'm a moment person. But I don't want to be a moment person. Jody, I want to be a movement person. Then you've got to move from the wanting and trying to get everything you want right now to the waiting and willing to work and wait for something worthwhile. And when you do that, you're going to have to answer or ask one of two questions. Am I asking the question of how long will this take or am I asking the question of how far can I actually go? And I hope that you will transition transition into being a movement person versus a moment person, into being a person who is willing to work and wait for that which is worthwhile versus being a person who wants what they want right now. Because I promise you, real success comes for movement people, comes for movement people. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe that is good, sound teaching right there. And it's not because I taught it. This is because I'm trying to invest in you and give you good quality content that will help you in becoming a successful person in whatever area of life that is, whether you're the housewife or the, or the mother, or whether you're the single father, or whether you're the entrepreneur, or whether you're the church leader, or, or whatever it is. Whatever it is, you're the business person, maybe you're the manager at your business, maybe you're the employee, but you're trying to become the manager. Maybe you're trying to become the, hey, listen, it, it's how far can I go? I don't have to stop at manager. I'll franchise my own line of restaurants. I'll franchise my own line of of, of clothing stores. There's the end. The end is only as far as you let it go. You say, what if I reach the end of my life, Jody, and I reach it with great disappointment? You will. If you're a moment person, you will, you will. But if you're a movement person, you will die. 
you will die moving towards your goal. You'll die doing it because you'll never run out of reasons to keep moving because you're living a life of significance. And so I encourage you, I encourage you to take the time to inspect yourself. Take the time to inspect yourself and ask yourself these questions Look at yourself under the microscope and under the magnifying glass and say, am I a moment wanting person or am I a movement working and waiting for something worthwhile person? And I hope if you're a movement person, you'll just keep moving. If you're a moment person, you'll move from moment to moving. You'll go from valley dweller looking at the mountain saying, oh, how long is it going to take me to climb to the top of this peak? And instead of doing that, you'll begin saying, how far could I go? How far could I go? I hope these concepts and these teachings are really being a blessing to you. And, uh, and that's, that's my goal. So I hope you'll join me every night here at 7.30 p.m. right here on this page. And I actually hope that you'll begin sharing this, sharing these videos. All you got to do is go right below this video, click share and share it on your page with all of the people you are acquainted with, because I believe, and if you believe that way, these videos can really help people and maybe put a caption above it and say, Hey, these videos are changing my life. You need to watch them. I'm doing it for free because we're in quarantine and people feel like quitting, but I choose not to quit in quarantine. I choose to conquer quarantine, right? I'm going to be successful even if I am quarantined and I want you to be the same. So I hope you've enjoyed this time. I hope you've enjoyed this time today of our real talk, amen, of our real talk with Jody Allman, 30 days of how to be successful. And I will be back with you tomorrow night with more exciting content informative content, inspirational content, and informational content that is going to change your life. But until then, God bless and have a great night.